Today's episode, the Chicago Blackhawks snapped their four-game losing streak with a 2-1 to overtime win over the Los Angeles Kings, led by Captain Jonathan Taves and 23-year-old goaltender Arvid Soderblom. I'll get into all of that and plenty more right here on Locked On Blackhawks. <laughs> Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Blackhawks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today is Friday, November 4th. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you can also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talkin' Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And I got to remind you all that today's episode is sponsored by Bet Online, which is both the fastest and the easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and Vegas casino games here in 2022. Bet Online, where the game starts. And real quick, if you're listening to the audio version of today's episode and you like what you're hearing today, then please be sure to go and follow the podcast. You could also go and leave me a review if you want to as well. And the best part about it all is that it's 100% for free wherever you may be listening to your podcast. Go and follow the show right now and you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. And if you're not already watching the video version of today's episode, then you got to be sure to go and check out Locked On Blackhawks on YouTube because every episode moving forward, folks, is going to have a video uploaded as well. So if you haven't done so yet, please do me a huge favor. Go and subscribe to Locked On Blackhawks on YouTube and go and turn on those push notifications, ring the bell, and that way you can get notified when the episode gets uploaded to YouTube each and every day. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining me on another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one-stop shop for all things Chicago Blackhawks. And thank you all for making the show your first listen here to start off your day. Getting into things this morning, finally, the Blackhawks were able to get off the schneid last night, picking up a much-needed 2-1 to win over the Los Angeles Kings at the United Center. Honestly, a, a pretty boring game to watch for the majority of the night. Uh, especially as a Blackhawks fan, because they definitely were not the better team last night. They got outshot, outchanced, outplayed, uh, outpossessed badly. The Kings felt like they were playing with the puck for the entire game. Uh, and the Blackhawks just really had no solution to the Kings defense. And if you all listen to the crossover episode that I had with Eddie Garcia from Lockdown Kings ahead of this matchup, then you'd know that the defense uh, hasn't necessarily been the strength for the Kings so far this season. It was for them last year, and that's, you know, good defense and good goaltending really is what boosted them into the Stanley Cup playoffs and gave the Edmonton Oilers a run for their money in the first round. Don't forget, that series went seven games and went to overtime almost. Or did it go to overtime? Oh, I know, it was Connor McDavid had the game winner either late in the third or an OT to give the Oilers the victory. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. Um, the defense and the goaltending just had not been good for the Kings through their first 12 games. Uh, but you certainly would not have been able to tell that's, you know, kind of been plaguing this team, uh, with the way that the Blackhawks offense performed last night and the way in with the way that they struggled to really get anything going. I mean, oh my goodness, they just had nothing going at all. They couldn't get anything going in transition. I think they had nine shots on goal through the first 30 minutes and they finished with uh, 19 on the game. So yeah, one of the um, most lackluster offensive performance, probably the most lackluster offensive performance out of the Blackhawks this season, other than maybe getting shut out against the Vegas Golden Knights in the second game of the year. But last night there was just, you know, no offensive zone cycles. Uh, again, transition, they got completely stymied. Like they couldn't get anything going in the neutral zone. And even when they did the rare occurrences where they did enter the neutral zone with some speed or had an opportunity to get something going. It, it felt like it was a whole lot of one and done. They'd get one shot off. They wouldn't win a battle in the corner and the Kings would be able to clear. So yeah, just as a struggle fest again from the Blackhawks offensively, uh, it's kind of back-to-back -back games where to be fair, you know, the Islanders are really good defense. And while the Kings haven't been known for that early on this season, it still feels like that's the strength of this team. And, 
Uh, Jonathan Quick's kind of had an up and down start, but we know what he's capable of, even still at his age, uh, when he's on his A game. And he, he looked pretty good last night, although the Blackhawks uh, didn't really test him much. But despite this poor offensive performance, uh, the Blackhawks were able to find a way to stay in it once again, kind of been the theme of the early portion of the season. The team's injured. Uh, they didn't look good on paper when they were healthy, but they just find ways night in and night out to remain competitive. And a big reason for, for this happening last night was due to the play from 23-year-old netminder Arvid Soderblom in just his third outing uh, of the season, his fourth career NHL start. He was nearly flawless for the Blackhawks. He stopped 32 of the 33 shots that he faced to pick up the first of what I will believe and what I think many Blackhawks fans believe will be uh, many victories for Soderblom at the NHL level. And this was honestly, this first victory was overdue for Soderblom given how well he played uh, in his first start of the year against Buffalo. And then Stalock obviously gets injured early against the Islanders. Soderblom comes in there and uh, looks really good too. So uh, a big tip of the cap to Arvid Soderblom. Um, he was the number one star really in my book. And the main reason why the Blackhawks were able to come out of this one with two points and, and just what Soderblom is showing us. It's, it's so impressive more so than just the stats. I think, I, I do think there's, um, some technique that some technique issues, it's not perfect, but again, being 23, he's going to have plenty of time to work on that. Uh, but the strengths are very evident. He He's really good at cutting down shooters to take away angles, very reactionary too, like slides post to post well to cut down um, on what looks like, you know, for a shooter, it looks like there's going to be some openings there, but Soderblom is quick post to post to cut that off. And then I think the glove hand is probably his biggest strength right now. Like all three of his showings this year, he's made some remarkable glove saves. Uh, I be- who did he rob last night? Forget who it was. It might've been Fiala. It it was a lefty on the right-hand side late in the third period, but Soderblom's best of the night, a big glove snag. And and yeah, he was absolutely incredible. I have nothing to complain about Arvid Soderblom other than his puck handling. It is, uh, I've said it was an issue. Quite frankly, it is not good. Um, Can't take the Alex Stalock approach. Uh, or at least I wouldn't if I was Arvid Soderblom with the way that he struggled to move the puck last night. He had another one where it bounced right to him and he tried to clear it and he threw it like right into Philip Ruse in front of the net. Uh, So that's probably the one thing that Arvid Soderblom still needs to work on a little bit, but um, no complaints from me, especially considering he's only 23 and not going to be 24 until next August. I'm super excited about this kid's future. And one thing that's kind of now been brought up as a result of Soderblom's strong play is uh, wondering if the Blackhawks would even consider keeping him up at the NHL level, regardless of Peter Morazic and Alex Stalock's health status, just because of how good he's looked. But uh, this was asked, Coach Richardson was asked this last night by the Blackhawks media, and it sounds like the plan is for Soderblom to go back down to Rockford eventually once the position, you know, gets a little bit sturdier. And that does make sense. I mean, they want Soderblom to be getting the lion's share down at the AHL level. And the reason they brought in Staylock and traded for Peter Morazic, not only was it to get back into the first round, but it was so they could have this extra patient approach with Soderblom right now. And just because of three games, and and look, I, I'll say it, Soderblom's looked incredible. And he very well may be already the best goaltender the Blackhawks have. Um, but they had a plan set in place moving into the season. And I don't think three starts is necessarily going to change that. And at the same time, you're, the Blackhawks just aren't going to be playing Arvid Soderblom as a starter up at the NHL, especially if Stalock and Morazic are healthy. It, it's just not going to work that way. So even though he has looked incredible and I'm super excited for what he's going to be in a couple of years, uh, I, I still think that this does make the most sense. I don't disagree with this decision. The Blackhawks are fortunately in a spot where they can be patient. And at the end of the day, yeah, Soderblom's already looking good. We want him to continue to grow and continue to get maximum reps so he can build on that and keep growing and keep growing. And I I personally think the best opportunity for him to do that 
is in Rockford. He's just not going to be playing every day up with the Blackhawks, at least not yet. Maybe next season with what we've seen so far. Uh, but I don't disagree with the decision to send Soderblom back to Rockford. But once again, big time stuff from the 23-year-old netminder last night. And congratulations to Arvid for picking up his first career NHL win. All right, coming up in just a minute, folks, I will talk about Jonathan Taves' overtime winner and his thoughts on the Blackhawks' start so far this season. But first, I got to talk to you all about Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. You can find all of the latest developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts on whatever game you want to place a wager on. Bet Online is also your continued source for all sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and game scores. It's both the fastest and the easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including the MLB, NHL, NBA, NCAA, MMA, boxing, and even golf. So head on over to the website right now, or you can also use your mobile device to learn more about all of the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. All right, we're back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. Segment two, definitely have to talk for a couple of moments about Jonathan Taze's game-winning goal in overtime to lift the Blackhawks to victory last night. Score was tied 1-1 to through 60 minutes. The lone goal for Chicago in regulation came from um, Jason Dickinson, who's continued to look just fantastic since being acquired from the Vegas Vancouver Canucks excuse me along with a second round pick and my oh my that just seems to be a marvelous deal made by general manager Kyle Davidson but Dickinson scored the lone goal in regulation for the Blackhawks his fourth of the season on a deflection uh Caleb Jones as well picks up yet another assist that's his sixth in the last six games since he was healthy scratched by Luke Richardson. So ever since that point, he's responded really well offensively and been producing basically every night. The worry is just, is Caleb going to be good enough defensively uh, to be uh, a lineup lock in the NHL and not just, you know, a sixth, seventh defenseman type of guy? Like it seems like he is right now. Offensively, we know he's got some skill there, but it, it's just all about the consistency in his own zone. And he just... He's kind of loose with the puck sometimes last night, and it wasn't the first time I've noticed this already this season, and maybe not even the second or third, but the puck just kind of floats off his stick, and it feels like his puck handling isn't the greatest. Defensively, obviously, he's not the most rugged. He's a smaller defenseman. That's really the area where, okay, now we're starting to learn that Caleb Jones has legitimate offensive skill from the blue line. It's more so about telling us that he's good enough to be an NHL or on the defensive side of things. I think that's where he's going to have to continue growing the most. Uh, but anyways, this isn't the Caleb Jones segment. This is the Jonathan Taves segment. And perhaps nobody loves three on three hockey more than captain Sirius himself, because as Mark Lazarus of the athletic posted last night, uh, Taves now has 13 overtime winners since three on three was put into play by the NHL, and that ties the league lead with uh, Brad Marchand and Connor McDavid, I believe. So, Taves, yeah, I don't know what it is about those three-on-three -three situations, but he continues to kill it. Uh, a lot of credit on that play, though, has to go to Jake McCabe as well for making a seamless pass to find Taves crashing the net. Uh, McCabe also now has three assists in his last four games as well, and his offense has kind of been a pleasant surprise ever since the Blackhawks acquired him. But how about the captain, Blackhawks fans? Absolutely continues to look incredible. His seventh goal of the season extends his point streak to seven games, now has five goals in his last six, on pace for 59 this year. And how about this one? Last year, Jonathan Taves had 12 goals total in 71 games played. He's got seven in his first 11 games this season. So Taves just continues to silence all the doubters, and it leaves me with a, a huge smile on my face. He's showing everyone, hey, I got plenty left in the tank, baby. I've heard everything you're saying, calling me washed up, saying I'm done, saying I'm old, can't make an impact, not the player I used to be. Eh. Jonathan Taves has proven everyone wrong right now. He really is playing at 
uh, such a high level, and I'm here for it. It's awesome to see Jonathan Taves get back to being this type of player. And honestly, Blackhawks fans, not sure how many more, you know, of these Taves moments uh, we're going to get with him in Chicago. So make sure to cherish them because they could be few and far between at this point. Uh, but regardless of that and Taves' future, considering everything he's gone through, it's awesome uh, to see him get off to this strong of a start. Again, so many people counted him out and, and assumed that he wouldn't be able to look like the player that he once was again. And he's proven all of them wrong right now. Uh, another big time goal last night from Taves, his seventh of the season, the game winner in overtime for the Blackhawks to get them back in the W column. And how about these Blackhawks folks? They're now five, four and two through their first 11 games. And I think even more importantly than that, uh, since their three game road trip to begin the season, they obviously lost, uh, five to two to Colorado to open up the year. Then they lose the next night, one, nothing to Vegas. They go out and pick up their first win of the season to wrap up that road trip in San Jose, winning five to two every game since then Blackhawks fans has essentially been a one goal game in their last eight, not counting the empty netters. The Hawks had an empty netter against Florida. The Islanders added an empty netter against them on Tuesday. Um, but they've been playing close games, night in, night out. It's been close, and their, imbil their ability to compete, despite not having some of their best stuff. Example A, last night against the Kings, I already mentioned, they were not the better team at five on five. I mean, go, go and look at the analytical numbers. They were pretty bad. But that's hockey sometimes. Uh, but, but yeah, the Hawks certainly were not on their A game last night. And that's, you know, it's happened throughout this start. It's not like, again, I've said this many times. It's not like the Blackhawks are playing perfect hockey or anything. Um, they, they just have found ways to remain competitive, and it's happened in a, in a bunch of different ways so far this year. I think one thing that's been overlooked a little bit, um, maybe not last night, but overall in the season, the goaltending. Like, regardless if it's been Stalock or Morazic or Soderblom, I've thought all three of the Blackhawks goaltenders have been pretty good this season. Uh, the defense last night, I know the, all the talk is going to be about the Blackhawks' lackluster offensive performance, and when you go and look at some of the analytics, they're largely lopsided in favor of the Kings. That might not have some Blackhawks fans realize that this defense played pretty well last night, but honestly, like, yeah, sure, they got out chance, they got out shot. That's because their offense didn't do anything. Defensively, I thought they gave up maybe three or four high quality looks to the Kings at even strength. If that, like the Blackhawks defense wasn't Swiss cheesy last night. They were holding their own. Arvid Soderblom didn't have to make too many big saves when he had to, he made them for the most part. Uh, but I thought the Blackhawks defense did a, a really good job last night. And more times than not this season, I've thought the defense has been all right. The special teams, not so much a factor last night, but throughout the course of the season, the power play has been really good. The penalty kill has been a little bit streaky when they're bad. They're really bad. Uh, but when they're good, they're really good too. Uh, and it, it's just been a bunch of different things. And I think the main thing stems from, as I'll talk about here in a second, head coach Luke Richardson and what he's preaching to this team. It's just clearly being reciprocated by the players. And Jonathan Taves kind of talked about this a little bit in his post-game interview yesterday. He said, you know, the start really isn't that surprising to the guys in the locker room, considering the commitment that they've made to one another and uh, how they've all kind of bought into this simple style that the Blackhawks have run with since their three game road trip to open up the season. Taves said, you know, they're just trying to play a simple game when they don't have the puck, hound it to try and get it back. And um, no taking shifts off, bringing the intensity. And, and again, it just sounds like this is, a really tight knit group right now that believes in themselves, regardless of what other people believe about them. Uh, they feel like they have the ability to compete with anyone right now. And whether or not that's going to continue to be true throughout the course of the season, I don't know, probably a little doubtful, but um, I don't think it's, you can't call it a lie right now. The Blackhawks have faced some quality opponents. I know the Florida Panthers are off to a slow start. Sure. They beat them a really close game against the Edmonton Oilers. The Buffalo Sabres are off to a good start. The Minnesota Wild are, are starting to show some life. The Blackhawks played them tough. The New York Islanders with their third, the, the Hawks had their third string goaltender. 
they gave the New York Islanders a fight. Like this team is just finding ways to fight right now. And, you know, I have to give them a lot of credit. It doesn't matter who they're going up against right now. I don't know if this is going to continue, but right now with the mentality they have in the locker room, feels like they can play a close game with anyone. And if you find yourselves in close games, if you keep up the intensity and the energy late, you're going to give yourself chances. That's kind of what happened last night. Another close game for the Hawks against LA. They push it to overtime thanks to some sturdy goaltending. Jonathan Tate stays hot and winds up with the game winner. And let me tell you, Blackhawks fans, it was definitely nice to come out on the winning side last night after uh, some tough, close losses here in the past week or so. All right, there are my full thoughts on the Blackhawks. Two to one overtime win over the Kings. Coming up in just a minute, I will get into a quick preview of the matchup on Saturday afternoon with the Winnipeg Jets. But first, I need to talk to you all about Simply Safe. And the numbers don't lie. In the last decade, over 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe home security to protect their home. You don't earn the trust of that many people without doing something right. And at Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. I know because I use Simply Safe in my own home. They protect you with the best cutting edge technology, including 24 seven professional monitoring agents who always have your back. And here's why I love it. Simply Safe blankets your home in protection with advanced sensors for every door, window, and room, HD security cameras for inside and outside your house, and even hazard sensors that instantly detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. And you can also go and customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash lockdown NHL and save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you also sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and you'll get the first month for free. All you have to do is visit simplysafe.com slash lockdown NHL to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Before I wrap up the show today, folks, I did quickly. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've been battling a little bit of a flu here this morning. I woke up stuffy, not feeling good. I probably tell my nose that probably sounded terrible to all you listeners out there. I apologize. <sighs> yeah, it, it hasn't been fun. Whenever the weather kind of changes, I know it's still in the 60s here today, but starting to head like this, my body really never reacts to that well. <sighs> Anyways, like I said, before I wrap up the show, folks, I do want to get into a quick preview of the matchup. On Saturday, the next time the Blackhawks are in action, and this is going to be a 2 p.m. Central Time puck drop against the Winnipeg Jets with college football on. Not sure how many folks are going to be tuning into this Blackhawks game, but uh, for those that will, those that are the diehards, don't forget this thing is starting at 2 p.m. And despite no one really being high on the Winnipeg Jets this offseason, they've gotten off to a 6-3 in one start through their first 10 games. One of uh, the many surprises, uh, not a huge surprise, but definitely better than everyone was expecting. Uh, one of the bigger surprises, quote unquote, in the NHL right now. And they're also 4-0-1 in their last five coming into this matchup. And kind of looking at uh, taking a deeper dive into how they've had success and how they've been able to kind of uh, string together some wins here recently. A lot of it seems to have to do uh, with the play of workhorse Connor Hellebuck in net, who's off to yet another strong start here this season. We don't have any confirmation that he's officially going to be in net for the Jets, but given how much they like to lean on him, uh, backup David Riddich only has two starts through the first 10 games. So uh, I would probably expect it to be Connor Hellebuck. They have no problem giving him a uh, the major majority of the starts 60 to 65 throughout the year. Uh, but looking at Hellebuck's number is really good. As always five, two and one in his first eight games, he's got a 2.35 goals against average and a 929 save percentage. So he's been great, been great through his first eight starts proving again, why I believe at least he's one of the best and most underrated talents in all of the NHL. And it, really feel sad that the Jets haven't been able to kind of capitalize on how good of a goaltender they've had. I mean, yeah, sure, their competitive window per se has kind of been open for the last seven or eight years, but they really haven't made any deep runs in the playoffs and really haven't made a serious push 
uh, to, to win the Stanley Cup. So uh, probably a little bit frustrating if I was Harrison, the host of Locked On Jets or any Winnipeg Jets fan. But uh, maybe this is the year. Maybe Connor Hellebuck, you know, says, I got to do it all myself this year. I'm going to have a career year. Uh, maybe that's what puts the Jets back into the playoffs. But looking at some of their other numbers, the Jets rank sixth in the NHL in goals allowed per game coming into this one. That's really the strength of the team. But the rest of the numbers, there's nothing really all that impressive there. The Jets are 27th on the power play. Uh, they're 13th on the penalty kill, so middle of the pack there. 29th on faceoffs. Uh, the Blackhawks struggled against the Kings, mostly Philip Deneau at the dot. Even Jonathan Taves didn't have a good night. Hawks still do rank first in the entire NHL in faceoffs, which has been a lovely change after how much they've struggled there the past few seasons. And they'll have a big opportunity to uh, win a big portion of them again in this matchup against the Jets, it looks like. Uh, and then the Jets are also ranked 22nd in goals per game right now, which is a little bit surprising given some of the uh, star power that they have up in their top six. Looking at the individual stats, Kyle Connor only has one goal and four points thus far. Mark Shifley does lead the team with six goals, but he only has one assist. Pierre-Luc Dubois has been a little bit quiet. Uh, Nick Ehlers has been out of the lineup, and it looks like he's not going to play on Saturday. Uh, Cole Perfetti has been a, a former first-round pick of the Jets. He's been one of their better players, but all in all, this offense, you know, like I said, it hasn't been the normal, like, star-studded top six carrying the way to victory for them so far. It's kind of been a, a committee approach offensively, uh, and they've really just relied on their defense and goaltending so far. But looking at kind of the line breakdowns, what the Jets uh, look like they're going to be rolling with, at least according to daily faceoff, looks like the top line is Kyle Connor, Mark Shifley, and Sam Gagne. It's interesting for sure. Didn't think Sam Gagne would still be a top liner at this point of his career. Uh, the second line looks to be Cole Perfetti, Pierre-Luc Dubois, and Blake Wheeler. Uh, I've already referenced Perfetti's been good. Wheeler's off to a good start. Look out for that second line, Blackhawks fans. Third line for the Jets, Mana Lanen. It's a heck of a last name. He's with uh, Adam Lowry and Mason Appleton on the third line. And then Fialbi is with Gustafson, David Gustafson, and Dominic Toninato on the fourth line. I'll tell you what, that is a gross-looking fourth line. On defense, though, you can tell this is why this is the Jets' strength. Top pairing, Josh Morrissey, first-round pick who's been there forever. Uh, they got Neil Pionk, who's been a good addition the last few years. The second pairing is Dylan DeMello with Nate Schmid, two good, responsible defensive defensemen. And then on the third pairing, they have Sandberg and Dylan DeMello. So it's clear why this is uh, the strong point of this team. I would probably expect this to be another low-scoring affair, Blackhawks fans. The Jets probably wisely uh, seem to lean heavily on this veteran defense and Connor Hellebuck being the one of the best goaltenders in net. And as we've seen from the Hawks in their last two outings, uh, nothing really to be stoked about in terms of their offense. I think we're probably going to have another boring, low-scoring affair on our hands this Saturday, again, for a 2 p.m. Central Dime puck drop when the Chicago Blackhawks take on the Winnipeg Jets for the first time this season. All right, folks, I think that is going to wrap up Friday, November 4th's episode of Locked On Blackhawks. Make sure if you're not already to go and follow Locked On Blackhawks for free right now on your favorite podcast app and go and subscribe on YouTube and you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. Thanks again for making Locked On Blackhawks your first listen today. For your second listen, go and check out Locked On Sports today from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports. Go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, thank you for tuning into today's episode. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can catch me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you could also go and check out my strictly Blackhawks account at Talkin' Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. So until the next episode, everyone, go out there and enjoy your weekend. Go Hawks. Let's hope to make it two in a row on Saturday against Winnipeg. And thanks again for tuning into the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.